Hi, I'm Stephen Feuerstein, and I write practically perfect PLSQL. So you may remember the process employee procedure. I went through it more or less line by line and identified lots of different kinds of hard coatings because hard coatings are the death knell of software. The more you hard code, the more you have repetition, the more your code gets brittle and easily breakable when things change. So now what I want to do is focus on the different aspects of hard coding and explore how to resolve them. And the number one hard coding that you will find in your code, and fortunately also the easiest to get rid of, are hard coded literal values. Now in this program, as in probably any program you can open up that you or I ever will write, you can find multiple hard codings of literals. So we see on lines 19 and lines 24 a repetition of the same number, 10 million. We also see on line 32 hard coding of an error number, hard coding of an error message. I'll come back to that one and we'll talk about how to get rid of that particular hard coding later. What I want to focus on right now are those literal values, those, those magic values that appear in our code. And the magic value here is, well, everybody knows that in our company, if you make more than $10 million, you're the CEO. That's the rule. And the rule is expressed on line 19 and implicitly repeated on line 24. So what do we do about these hard-coded literal values? Well, as I said, this is pretty much the easiest challenge, and I'm sure it's something you've run into yourselves as well. What you need to do is replace the literal with a name. And that process, actually, of replacing the details, the implementation, with a name that hides the details is not only a fundamental aspect of language and communication between humans overall, but also the fundamental process that you will apply to all the other hard codings. Take the implementation, cover it up, hide it with a name, information hiding, as a principle that comes out of object orientation, for example. So how do we hide a literal value? Well, there are a few different ways, but the primary things to look at is either hiding it behind a constant or a function. Let's take a look. So moving off of process employee, here's a little anonymous block that's quite simple. It says, let's do a case statement on the order status. If the order status is open, then fill the order. If the open status is closed, the order status is closed, then close the order. Now, we should look at that code and say, well, that's good. That looks pretty clean and nice and easy to read, but the order status always is, go is going to be in uppercase O-P-E-N and closed is always going to be C-L-O-S-E-D. What if somebody comes along and get a new manager on your team and they say, I don't like these big words. I think we should use O for open and C for closed and that's it. Well, then we have to go and find all the places that we've defined that we've used the literal open and we've used the literal closed and replace them. Now, one thing to note, first of all, and why I mentioned that this, I think, is the easiest form of hard coding is that it's pretty easy to do a search across your entire code base and find all the instances of open or find all the instances of closed. And then what you could do is do a global search and replace across all your files all at once with your powerful editor and replace open with O and closed with C. You could do it. I wonder how many of you have ever done a global search and replace in your code. It's a powerful thing to do, but it can be a very scary and risky thing to do. So the rule when you want to do global search and replace is you need to look at every single replacement and make sure that it makes sense. What's the downside? Let me tell you about the downside. Years and years, years ago, in 1992, I left Oracle, spent five years at Oracle, and went off to be a consultant like so many other people. And I worked at a uh, headquarters of a fast food company, or as they like to put it, quick service company. And I was working for a part of the company that had to do with managing their real estate. Anyway, they asked me to do a fix in, in, in some program that uh, ran in production and was used every day by the real estate people. And so I did a real classic, classic act by a supposed guru of technology. I, I made a fix to the code. And then I said, you know what, while I'm here, it looks like there's some other stuff that we should fix. You've got some references to literals. You've got this, you've got that, you've got the other. And so I decided to help them and fix up their code. So I did a global search and replace and I didn't check every single line of code. And inadvertently, what I did, though it wasn't quite this dumb, what I ended up doing was replacing a where clause that said where department ID equals L department ID or some variable. I replaced it essentially into where one equals one, where department ID equals department ID. I didn't realize it. I ran a couple of tests, seemed okay. Sent it off to QA, they ran their test, seemed okay. 
put it into production Sunday night and on Wednesday, they had to roll back three days of production activity because when somebody deleted one thing, it deleted a whole bunch of things. That was pretty sad and not, not one of my greatest days as a programmer, but the good news is that they didn't blame me. It wasn't my fault. It was the testing organization's fault. Whew. So I managed to dodge that bullet. In any case, global search and replace, very powerful, very risky. Make sure you actually look at every single replacement and make sure it makes sense. But really you don't want to do a search saying, well, it used to be open, now it's O, so let's replace open with O. Obviously, the next manager or somebody else could come along and say, I don't like O, I want it to be lowercase O, or I want to go back to open. What you want to do is avoid having the repetitions, having this open, in quotes, appearing in more than one place in your code. What can you do about it? Well, first of all, you can simply put those values inside a constant. So declare a constant, assign the value in the constant declaration, put the constant in the package specification, and then anywhere you referenced open, you would do a global search and replace with package dot name of open. So that's what you see here now. So now my case statement is exactly the same as it was before, but you don't see the word open in quotes, you see the name open. Now I use my un C underscore as my prefix to indicate it's a constant. You could just make it be package dot open or open status. The names are important and you pick your approach. Uh, but in any case, the hard coding is gone. And then if I need to change it, I change it in one place. I go back to the package specification. I make a change to that value, recompile my package, which will force all dependent programs to be recompiled, but it'll pick up the new definition from there. No other changes are needed in my code. That's the main thing. Change it in one place, have the ripple effect, fix everything else automatically, as opposed to finding all the locations where those repetitions occur and putting the fixes in there manually. So that's one approach. Now, the, there's a problem with a constant. Well, let's talk about the good things about the constant. First of all, it's really fast. Accessing a constant inside your PL SQL code is extremely fast. One problem, though, is I can't reference that package global inside an SQL statement. I can't say select this or use it in a where clause. So I can't say select this value from my table. If I try to reference a global inside SQL, it says I don't know what you're talking about. I can only reference functions. So an alternative to putting the definition of my open inside or behind a constant is to move it into a function. So here's a package that has an open status function and a closed status function. I declare them to be deterministic because the value is never changing, and that can give us some optimizations uh, when the code runs, depending on its context. But mainly what I'm, what I'm saying is that there are no external dependencies in this function. And in fact, if we look at the package body, it's pretty clear there are no external dependencies. It's a very basic function. The function simply returns the value, which I've still defined in a constant, but now hidden inside the package body. So the advantage here is that I can call this function inside SQL outside of PLSQL. So if I'm writing a report in a standalone SQL statement, I can reference it, call this function. The other nice advantage of it is that it hides the value in the package body. So when I was using my package with constants, one of the downsides, you might not think of it as a downside, but one of the potential downsides is anybody can see the value. I can see that the actual value for C open is the word open. The problem there is that programmers can be pretty lazy, especially when they're under a lot of pressure. And I might say to myself, oh, I don't want to write app config package dot C open. I'm just going to write open because I can see in the package spec that's what it is. So why would I bother doing anything else? So we want to avoid that. And one of the ways to avoid it or discourage it is to put the value inside the package body. I can grant execute authority on my package spec to other developers and other schemas, and they can only see the specification. I completely hide the implementation behind the body. So that's a nice advantage there. A disadvantage of putting it inside the function is the performance. So it's definitely more expensive to call a function than it is to reference a constant. So you have to balance all these different criteria as you go about deciding what to do with your hard-coded literals. I often end up in my applications using a combination of things based on where it's going to be used, how it's going to be used, and what the performance requirements are. Now, the third alternative to putting in, in a package, so I can put it in a package constant, I can put it behind a package function, is to put it inside a table, completely soft code my values. So I might have a table called magic values, and I would insert it into that table 
my magic value information, the name, I could even have, if I want to get fancy, the identifier, the name of the variable inside PLSQL that I'm going to generate this value into, the actual value in the data type. You can kind of get as fancy as you want to, or don't get too fancy. Always a good, a good idea. Once I've created the table, what I can do is create a single function that returns the value for whatever name I pass in. But then the problem there is you, you still have to specify a name. At some point or other, you're going to hard code something. For example, even going back to my function or my constant value, inside the name of my function open status or the name of my constant, I've still hard coded the word open and closed. So you, you might say, well, there's no advantage, Stephen. It's just as hard coded as it was before. Yes and no. Yes, in that the word open it shows up in both places. No, in the sense that what you're seeing in the name of my constant or the name of my function is a description of the value, not the value itself. In this simple case, they're the same. But it could be that the value open is actually open status with blah, blah, blah. It could be a much more complex string, or it could be a number. I'm expressing what the content of that value is with the name. So yes, I'm hard coding the fact that it's about opening, but I'm not hard coding the fact that it is open. The value is open. Okay, so clearly I can create a general function, get me the magic value for this name. I have to know this name, maximum salary, but that's the maximum salary. That's not the name of the variable or the name of the value. It's describing the contents. So it's okay, I think, but you still have to remember that name. And the other nice thing about putting the data inside uh, a table is that I can then generate code based on the contents of that table. And I think code generation is an, is an incredibly powerful technique that we should all be using to be more productive, to be lazy in a really good way. And in this case, what you're seeing is a magic values package generator that I wrote on top of my table. So I can literally generate out a package like I showed you before with either constants or functions or both based on the contents of the table. So I can manage the contents of my magic values table. I can even put a trigger on the table so that when a change is made to the magic value set, it calls the generator. It, generate, it generates a new package. It could even automatically compile that package, so you probably wouldn't want to do that. And here's an example of what I end up with. Here's a generated package based on the three rows in the table. So I've got my three functions. There's the identifier name. And then it's, de it's declared to be deterministic. It's not going to be changing. It's also declared to be result cached because since the value doesn't change until the table changes, my result cached function can automatically cache that function call and reduce the cost of even calling a function inside SQL and inside PLSQL. So these are several different techniques you can use to avoid having those hard-coded values showing up directly in your code. And in general, the, I think what you should be looking for are any literal values, and strings are probably the worst of all, though numbers can be quite obscure themselves, and replace them with a name. And the name could be a constant, it could be a function, it could be a generic function call that you pass the descriptor in and get the value back. But in any case, the main thing to remember is that you're defining the value in one place. You could define it inside the package body, you could define it inside the table, but it's defined in one place only. You change it in one place, and the process rolls on from there to, to make sure that the rest of your code is kept in sync.